What's going on guys, Phil here from Phil's Craft Corner. Uh, today we're looking at Meerkat, uh, spelled Meer K40T, which is a new piece of laser software to get your files sent to the K40 laser with a uh, stock board. And by the looks of it, this is kind of an in-between of K40 Whisperer and Lightburn. Now Lightburn's an amazing piece of software. Uh, you can do your photo editing and everything in there, but it doesn't work with a stock board, which is a little bit unfortunate because it's just so good. I used it with a diode laser, and it's unbelievable. K40 Whisperers does a good job of sending the data over to the laser after you've made the design in Inkscape and imported it into there. Again, with Meerkat, you do need to make your design in Inkscape or another program and save the SVG and then bring it back into Meerkat and start from there but you have much more control there's some camera support there's, uh, there's PPI support so we'll head over to the github and we'll have a look at their page and where you can get Meerkat from I'll put a link down below so you can get straight over there and jump on there it's coded with Python from what I think what I can tell yeah it's coded with Python and down here you can have a quick overview of what Meerkat is and so you've got the, the dual drivers which installs your K40 with the whisperer method or the laser draw method and to be honest I just switched it on clicked the settings added a new machine in and it was just there it just instantly connected no driver install maybe I already had the driver installed from K40 whisperer but it, it just instantly recognized my machine and it just started working straight away, I could move it around, I could do a test fire, awesome. Zooming in and out is nice and easy, I'll show you through the, a quick overview of the software itself and how I've been navigating it. I only started using it this morning because I've seen a few guys mentioning it on the laser groups and I thought I'd give it a go, so uh, we're learning together as always. The thing that drew me to this the most was the PPI power modulation and that's kind of like PWM where you can control your power to the laser and it'll automatically take a grayscale image and change the power setting. I've done a few tests with this, I'll show you in a minute when we go over to the laser machine with the testing and in theory you could just turn your dial up to 100% and change the power in the program and it does work. I did test that out but it's a little bit strange and it doesn't work that great so what I've done is I've set my maximum power at what I like to cut 3mm ply at and then I, turn, I make that 100% power and then I go from there downwards just to make it a bit safer and it, it worked a little bit better for me uh, on the fly job processing see this is uh, supposed to be like instantly creates that scan line with the data and sends it to the board and it does it starts up immediately but I don't know if it's with my board or it's something else that happens on there but it doesn't send all the data there's a lot more pauses in raster engraving from what I found and this is just a small little raster engraving that I did in Meerkat than there is in K40 Whisperer we'll do a test and I'll show you what that's like in there uh, pixel perfect curve cutting this bleeds in with the PPI modulation control uh, it scans the pixel and it automatically decides whether it's 100% uh, black, 50% black, 25% black and then it changes the, the power on your control board for that so to, again to install it was really easy for me to install I'm on Windows, you just download an EXE and just run the EXE and that is it, it doesn't actually install on the program it's just a standalone EXE to run which works quite well so that's just a quick overview and how to download it, there's other ways to install it um, I don't use a Mac, I don't use Linux so I don't really know how they work but you have a lot of files here it's open source so you can take it from there so 
let's jump back into the software and show you navigating around the main panel. So this is your main panel. Uh, like I say, when I connected, just clicked on devices. I uh, don't know why this was there. That was, pr was probably there as a default, but um, I've just left it on there. I don't know why that disappeared then. I didn't click anything. So you, I added my K40 Whisper. I just clicked add, put a name in, and it was just there. It, there was no other settings, nothing to do. It, it's just there. So you click on that one, and then you can have your preferences here, which does bring up machine settings. I will expand this if I can so we can see better. Not much better, but let's see. So you've got your board. It has multiple board layouts. Mine's the M2, which is usually the stock one for the K40. You can flip your X and Y, or both X and Y, home right or bottom. I've left it as home in top left, which is the default anyway. Uh, I've not messed about with this because I don't want to mess about with that. But it must be set perfectly. Uh, I'm, un I'm from what I understand is it's just to test things without actually sending the data to the machine. It's, it's, it's setting up a fake machine just to run the program and do some testing. So just, just leave this one. I have shifted my home button, and again I will take you over to Laser and I will show you this. But when I click home, it now sets the laser perfectly to the top left corner of where I can align pieces. I can just shove them in right up, up into where my stops are and that is, I moved it every millimetre until I got it to the top left corner where I wanted it. Uh, I recorded where the, the home was, clicked set current and that was it. Every time I come into the software now and I click home it goes back into that corner and it's perfectly right for me. Uh, which again I set home after job is complete because it doesn't matter where whereabouts I put the job on this sheet it will always go back to there from that home position so that was the laser setup it's quite easy to use it's quite straightforward uh, you've got the navigation set up here which we only have this one highlighted at the moment so this moves your laser jogs it around and you can do a test fire here. You can move to X or Y position, but this isn't set in millimeters. I think this is set in pixels. So if I chose to move 320 millimeters on the X axis, it only moves around five millimeters on the actual control board. The maximum is around 19,000 or something. Um, I don't think this really matters. You can click and drag up here. Uh, you can use your arrow keys on the keyboard and that moves the laser. So to import a program onto here, it's quite easy to do. Uh, you just click on your import file, just open, uh, open the file and it's just there. It's nice and quick. It's a lot quicker than K40 Whisperer and to move stuff you can't highlight but if you click and drag it'll move one there's no undo key either a bit upsetting so to undo everything you just have to remove it all uh, clear that file again and open it again if you want to move all of it together you need to click on the elements right at the top here you can move individual elements using this or you can just click the elements and that will let you move the whole thing. Again, you can't use the arrow keys to jog this around, that will just jog the laser, but you can click the navigation button and you can, you've can you then got these ones here. So you can jog the file around with that one. You can change how many millimeters you were moving with this one and you can expand and contract, rotate with these ones, so if I click that, it'll raise and lower it one millimeter at a time. That'll rotate it one millimeter that way and that way. And then again, you can just set it to the default, just clicking the X. Okay, so I had a few issues with moving the navigation and wasn't working out properly. Now, uh, 
I ended up re-recording it to get it right and that recording didn't happen so this is the, the third time I'm recording this section now so I've got my camera set up at the laser uh, recording in real time what happens when I click on here and what happens at the laser so as I said I can move this piece pretty much anywhere and then hit home and the laser will jog so if, if, let's say I'll move a hundred and my num lock works uh, I'll move a hundred over to the right and then I'll move a hundred mil down and hopefully not hit that camera that was close uh, and then um, I'll tell you what I'll move a little bit further up I'll move another 50 up just so I don't knock the camera over while I'm showing you there we go and then hit home and that's exactly that same position uh, I'll use a test fire on here boom right there and again I'll I'll move 50 back in that direction hit home goes right in that corner I can even turn the machine off and on again Make the machine home and then hit home on here and it goes back into that corner if for some reason uh, your USB controls don't work and they stop working you might have to check in your program files and see if they there's a conflict for some reason with the USB um, sometimes it does it sometimes it doesn't but this is a beta uh, it's not a full release yet like I say it's, it's version 0 0.52 so it's still in the testing phases you've got to expect a few hiccups here and there but on a whole it does work pretty well so for setting up your speeds that's the top section in the operations with the files and you, you can kind of just ignore that that just shows you what files you've got loaded your elements are what moves it around and you can move each individual one around you can change which color layout is on each one but that just changed changes where it, what color it is on here that's for more detailed ones say if I could, everything was slightly different then helps you keep track of that a little bit more with the engraving from what I found at the moment you only can have one for each individual so in Inkscape let me just zoom in here you just use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out and your middle mouse wheel to pan around so with Inkscape I set up my raster engrave as black I set up my vector engrave as blue and I set up my uh, vector cut as red as always just like in K40 Whisperer so that translates to three different ones on here which you can change your raster speed, your engrave speed and your cut speed I'm not sure if I set any more elements say if I separated all of these elements would I be able to separate each raster engrave but I don't think I can uh, I'll have to have a look in that a little bit more but for now we day one of testing day two because I lost all the stuff uh, so to set, to set your speeds you just double click I, I start from the bottom so uh, so I set my cut which is 100% power which is 1000 on here uh, and my speed at 10 millimeters a second which 100% uh, power equates for me where I've got my machine set up to 15 milliamps on my dial so that's around 50% max power of the tube I've got so I'll, I always set that to 100% max which is 15 milliamps and my speed to 10 millimeters a second that cuts through 3 millimeters ply for me without having to worry too much my vector engrave uh, I'll set that at 40 at a third of the power so that's 5 milliamps roughly I've not had a look at these custom D ratio um, I think that makes it di uh, engrave diagonally 
I'm not too sure. Um, but these two are what I've been messing with at the moment. Uh, might go into that in the future. I do a bit more research and testing. And then we go to our raster speed. Uh, my raster I have at 300 ppi, which is again 5 milliamps roughly. Uh, I set my speed at 350 millimeters a second. I set my raster step. Um, this is set in mil, not mils, not mils, mil. Uh, this equates to one one thousandth of an inch. So I set this to three or four, depending on what I'm engraving. Uh, three gives pretty good results and still fairly quick. So that's three thousandths of an inch, which is your scan line depth. So um, the, the gap between each line. Uh, you the lowest you can set this is one and then go up from there and that leaves more of a gap in between each line. You have got raster engraving top to bottom, left to right, I always go top to bottom anyway. Uh, over scan I have a, a 10 mils. This stops your laser ending and starting movement at the exact same time as the lasers fired and it makes a big difference, especially at low speeds. If you're moving really low and your laser just starts firing before the, your head has moved, you end up with a, a deep burn spot at that point. You want to have a bit of an overscan so your laser's moving, your, your head is moving before the laser fires. That way you end up with cleaner lines at the edges of your engraving. And that's it, that's how I have that set will go to the big laser button up here which sets the job ready click execute commands that gets everything ready to go and hooks it up with the laser and then you hit go and it starts straight away with me saying about the pauses before this is the setting that I changed, I changed my buffer to 2500 and that works really well for me, there's hardly any pauses. I've tried to do a couple of pictures, testing that out, and it works really well. So as you can see from that, it works really well, it works extremely quickly. The The noise level is a bit higher, it's like quite a bit higher to be fair. Uh, that's due to the fact that there's more power going through with the raster engraving, but it pulses it, which is how the PPI works. It just pulses the laser instead of it being constantly on. and. I'm quite happy with the results that I get with it. So I'm going to do more testing with this. I'm going to do more experimenting, get into grips with it. I'm going to keep you updated with all the updates that are coming out because they are coming out fairly regularly, I'd say. 
one a month from what I can see on the GitHub and it looks to be quite promising for what it is. Uh, the UI can do with some tweaks, there's a few little issues here and there that can do with a few tweaks but I'm pretty sure that they're going to work them out, especially with this being in fairly early beta, um, it, it's very promising. So thanks for watching guys, if you want to follow along with these videos hit that subscribe button and whack that bell button as well just to make sure you get notified. If this helped you in any way, I know I rambled on quite a bit but there's a lot of information about this program, just hit that like button, it helps me out a lot. Uh, all the links for where to download it and everything are down below and I will see you in the next one.